Hey, this is Jeff Barry with Revival Cycles. Cool. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, Chris from Revival Cycles here at Barber Vintage Fest. This year we decided to come to Barber Vintage Fest and enjoy it. In the past few years we've set up tents and sold merch and showed off bikes. But this year we're hanging out at the Swap Meet looking at some, some sweet, sweet treasure. Uh, and we'll take you through some of our good finds in this video and show you more soon. We're here at the Cycle X booth, checking out some of their cool custom features for Honda CBs. Machine this slipper clutch conversion, back cut transmission, a really sweet roller bearing wheel so you can see everything going on inside. Three phase charging system conversion. Yeah, just a lot of really trick shit for your Honda. Seen a lot of choppers this weekend. One of my favorites here is a 67 BSA chopper. Just some really sweet home built, probably from the 70s, 80s. Love the extended Springer front end. Super cool coffin tank. And then of course the beautiful BSA motor. In my opinion, much better looking than Triumph or, or Harley motor. Seen a lot of these this year. Maybe we'll build one. So we found some more treasure here at the swap meet, a Rickman Matisse dirt bike, T120R. So it's a Triumph motor in a Rickman Matisse custom frame. And this was a kit that you could buy in the 60s and turn your Triumph into a, a dirt bike because manufacturers didn't sell proper dirt bikes at that time. And Rickman Matisse uh, became famous for these super lightweight and strong frames. We actually built a custom Bella set using one of their early Rickman Matisse uh, road racing frames. They had such success in the off-road world, they ventured into building road racing frames. Highly coveted, a lot of mystique around them. Super cool bikes. So this was actually uh, has been an Arma race bike, so you can see by the picture here on the forks. One of the features they've added to this engine is an oil filter. Originally this engine didn't have an oil filter on it, so uh, trying to get the most miles out of it. They've welded in fittings to the engine case here uh, and then added an oil filter. A couple other modern touches, a modern carburetor, so it's easier to start, and then an electronic ignition system as well. $8,800 for a really clean, relatively original example. It's not bad, it's a super cool bike. I'd take it off some sweet jumps. Hey, this is Jeff Berry with Revival Cycles. You might have talked to me before in tech support. Uh, I do a lot of product curation for the company. This is actually my first time on camera. I was going to talk a little bit about a bike that's near and dear to me, the old Bridgestones. This is a, a GTO 175, a little more uncommon than the other GTRs, which were low pipes. The GTOs were scramblers. These were bikes that were way ahead of their time when they came out. They had cast iron cylinders with chrome bores, rotary valves with a six-speed clutch back in 68 and 69. The bigger 350s were actually designed to go up against the Triumphs of the era, arguably were maybe better bikes, but were a little more expensive and being Japanese, not necessarily as desirable. Cool bikes though, the Bridgestone really spared no expense on these. Everything that you really could do on a bike commercially, they invested and did on these. The legend goes that the other big three Japanese manufacturers sat down with Bridgestone, complimented them on the quality of the builds that they were doing, but also expressed concern that as they focused more and more on bikes, that the quality of their tires was gonna go by the wayside and that all the manufacturers may actually have to find a new source for all the tires for their production bikes. And uh, quickly after that, Bridgestone folded and sold off to, uh, I believe it was Riverside, to do the rest of their sales. I don't know actually how true that is, but that's, that's the, the legend. More treasure. We just stumbled across this really cool Zundap. I'm not even sure what model it is, but Zundap was a German manufacturer, huge in Europe uh, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, but there's not a lot of examples in the US, especially pre-World War II models. After World War II, most of them were destroyed to help rebuild Europe. So it's really rare to see one, uh, especially in the States. This one's pretty cool, has 
overhead valve engine. Really massive brake drums for the time. Has a lot of cool patina and looks like this bike may have been a participant on the cross country chase, which is a motorcycle race started in Michigan and drove down to the southern tip of Florida just a few weeks ago. So it's definitely a rider. More treasure. Found the mid 70s Kawasaki S2, 350cc uh, triple two stroke. This year we've seen a ton of Kawasaki H2s, H1s, which are 500cc and 750cc triple cylinder two stroke engine mid 70s super bikes and a ton of Yamaha RD 400s and RD 350s. Basically a two stroke mecca here at uh, Barber Vintage Fest. This one caught our eye because the S1 was a 350cc, which was the smallest triple two stroke engine. A lot of people have taken this engine and put it in the RD 350, RD 400 frame for the better uh, geometry for a road racing. Pretty rough example, but it's hard to find one these days that haven't been cut up. This one is pretty original. $2,500 to take it home. More treasure. Here we stumble across uh, Moto Marini. Not very well known, but it's uh, another Italian manufacturer that made motorcycles in the 60s and 70s. Uh, this is a Moto Marini 3.5 or 350. It's a 350cc V twin. Really cool bike. We actually built a custom Moto Marini a few years back out of the 500cc version of this bike. Uh, here's some pictures of it here. treasure and this is in my opinion the coolest part of the swap meet this is definitely my favorite this guy has uh, imported a bunch of gray market motorcycles a bunch of European and Asian market motorcycles we don't have in the US uh, and he's offering them up for sale when I first saw this I thought it was a, a 91 Kawasaki ZX 7R super clean bike uh, I love the Ram air through the gas tank into the airbox. I think that's a super cool feature. But looking at it closer, it's actually a ZXR 250R. So a 250cc displacement for European uh, markets. A bike that we never had in the US, making it super cool. This is a RZV 500R. Yeah. Jeff's our, our resident two-stroke expert. I'll let him talk about this bike a little bit. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, at first glance, everybody thinks this is an RZ from a distance, but really this one was the beast. Never brought into the U.S. A lot of these came in through Canada, though. There's quite a few of them that I think here in the U.S. now. Um, again, all of them gray market. Uh, you don't see a lot of them when you do. They've usually, the ones I've seen, have been thrashed because they're always taken out to the track and ridden really hard. And what's the difference between a TZ and this bike we're looking at here? Um, honestly, I think there's a tremendous amount of difference. Um, as far as I know, none of the technology from the TZs are directly translate over to the, the RZVs. The TZs ended up turning into uh, the four-cylinder, excuse me, the two-cylinders, which I'm pretty sure the TZR250 that they've got, over, we'll see in a minute, is more like a traditional TZ track bike. So a TZ is a, a V-twin two-stroke or a uh, parallel? They twin? were in later. Originally, they were parallel twins, and then uh, in the eight, like mid-80s, they switched to a V-twin. And then this is a V4 500cc yeah, two-stroke. Yeah. So we're, pretty big difference in the engine, different uh, power characteristics. This will be a, a higher revving engine, but still have torque because it's a 500cc, which is large for a two-stroke. Yeah. The engine rebuilds on these now cost a fortune because there's so few parts available for them. Yeah, this is super cool because it's very original, like original exhaust, original levers. It still has turn signals normally when we see bikes like this, uh, an RGV 500. They've been laid over a few times. I haven't seen any crash damage on it. Looks like you can take it for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> 33,000 miles, it looks like somebody didn't sit in a garage. Kilometers. Oh. <laughs> yeah. European market. Yeah. And then this bike, RGV 500, uh, we've actually had a few of these in the workshop at Revival. Two-stroke, 500cc, uh, V4 engine. Uh, Kevin Schwant's a regular of, of our workshop. He's got a couple of these bikes. This is the street version of his uh, Moto GP World Championship bike. So very cool. And then the faster blue and white color. These are both, I think, the largest 
two-stroke street bikes that were ever produced. Yeah. And obviously, one is the answer to the other from that era. Exactly. That's Yamaha's version and Suzuki's version of the, the super bike back in the day. This is 96 RGV 250, so it's still a two-stroke motorcycle. 96, we didn't have two strokes in the U.S. anymore at that point. And a 250cc displacement, small displacement so that uh, people with their license, the 250cc license in European markets could ride this bike. That's why the, the smaller bikes are more popular in the, those markets. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe our YouTube channel and take a look at what we've got going in the workshop. Thanks again. Bye -bye. Now's the time of video where most people ask for money or donations or whatever. I'm not going to ask you for that. What I'm going to say to you is, if you want to see more videos and you want to learn more of what we've learned, and you want to see a deep dive into a lot of these topics, go to our website and buy something. We sell everything from motorcycle gear, helmets, uh, motorcycle parts, specialized tools. We sell lots of things and they've all taken us years to figure out what the best stuff is and we figured it out. So go to revivalcycles.com. There's some really good stuff there, everything from like Kick ass hand grips from Posh to Radiance LED lighting and everything in between. We want to teach you what we know, but this stuff takes time and it takes real effort to make these videos and make them good for you guys. So go support us by helping yourself to the cool stuff you already need. And it helps us because we make a little bit of profit and then we can justify doing more videos. Thanks for your support.